For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Welcome to Christmas at South Lake. My name is Jose Vaz, and I am the head of the Fine Arts Department and the Director of Instrumental Ensembles at South Lake Christian Academy in Huntersville, North Carolina. Christmas is a time to rejoice and to reflect on God's redemptive provision to the world with the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight's concert is the perfect occasion to present our arts as an act of worship to Him. The mission of our Fine Arts Department is to cultivate creativity through a Christian worldview in order to foster cognitive and social development as we pursue excellence in artistic expression. We believe in the artistic expression as a form of worship. That is the reason of our existence, and tonight's concert exemplifies our mission. Tonight's show has been a collaborative effort of many people. First, our fine arts team, our director of choral and vocal ensembles, Mary Ann Falls, and our visual art teachers, Marcus Mims and Marion Steger. Second, our administration, Dr. Matt Curlin, Rebecca Lerner, our principals, Becky Macla, Mark Apgar, and Jennifer Thomas, our faculty and staff, our parents and families, and lastly, and most importantly, our students. You have worked very hard for this concert, and I'm very proud of you. To all of you, thank you very much. Thanks to technology, we are now able to extend our reach to literally people from all over the world. For that reason, I want to take this opportunity to greet them and welcome them to this show. To our audience in Germany, Freulich hin bei Nachten. To our audience in Italy, Buon Natale. To our audience in Puerto Rico, Cuba, Peru, Venezuela, Colombia, Mexico, and Spain, Feliz Navidad from coast to coast all over the United States of America and to our Southlake Christian families in Huntersville, North Carolina, Merry Christmas. Before we start our concert, please welcome our new choral director, Mary Ann Falls, followed by our head of school, Dr. Matt Curlin. Merry Christmas. My name is Mary Ann Falls and I'm delighted to say that I'm your child's music teacher. This was an answer to prayer for me coming to South Lake. I've been wanting to teach JK through 12th grade for years. So I'm very glad to be here in this warm and welcoming community. Our lower school program tonight is called A Candlelit Christmas and it's based on the Advent wreath. And so we got to study a little bit about what the candles mean and uh, what the songs mean and, and why do we have a prophecy candle, etc. We've had some amazing discussions actually on redemption and uh, also the Trinity and the eternity of God. So it's been really, really wonderful. My favorite line in the program is that we are waiting with hope for Christ and not the maybe it's gonna happen kind of hope, but the I know it's going to happen and I can't wait for it to happen kind of hope. That's what we have, and that's what I desire for you for this Christmas season and for the rest of the year, that we wait in hope for Christ, because he's returning, and I can't wait. A um, few people to say thank you to. I'd love to thank uh, Dr. Curlin, Mrs. Mackla, Dr. Apgar for their support in me and my new role here. I'd like to thank all the teachers for, especially the elementary teachers, who've played some of the songs in their classrooms and worked with the kids to keep shoring up those songs and getting them ready for the program. I'd like to thank the students who have worked very hard for me learning, um, learning how to get along with a new music teacher and all the things that I've asked of them and to, to rise to the challenge of difficult music. I'd especially like to thank Mr. Bass He's been a wonderful support and he's worked so very, very hard on making a beautiful presentation of our concerts. So I thank you very much. And may God be glorified and honored in all our efforts. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Christmas at South Lake. 
This year, I am incredibly grateful uh, to arrive at this time of year. I'm thankful for all of you and for your affiliation with South Lake and for trusting us with your students. Christmas at South Lake is a big tradition, and each year we really just love having our students perform Christmas music and gathering together as a community to hear them show their talents. But this year, they're going to display their abilities in a bit of a different way. We're going to do this by video, and so I'm incredibly grateful to Mr. Bass and Ms. Foltz for their hard work in preparing for this video production. You know, in the earliest uh, time of Christmas, it was celebrated with song. In fact, when Mary herself was told that she would give birth to the Savior, she broke out in song. And she said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now all generations will call me blessed. And she wrote a song that appears in the first chapter of Luke called Mary's Magnificat, a song of praise to God for what he was doing through her, sending Christ to be the Savior of the world. My prayer for you is that as you watch this video production of our students singing Christmas music, that you would feel the presence of God and celebrate the birth of Christ this season. Thank you. And now, this is the moment we have been waiting for. Enjoy Christmas at South Lake, a virtual concert. And to all of you, Merry Christmas.
Advent for Beginners, the Kids Book of Advent 2, the Meaning and Wonder of Advent, Advent for Dummies, let me try this one first. What is Advent? Advent is a period of spiritual preparation in which many of the Christians make themselves ready for the coming or birth of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Celebrating Advent typically involves a season of prayer, fasting, and repentance, followed by anticipation, hope, and joy. Fasting? That means not eating! Michael, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> many Christians celebrate Advent not only by thanking God for Christ's first coming to earth as a baby, but also for his presence among us today through the Holy Spirit, and in preparation and anticipation of his final coming at the end of time. This one says this, Advent's origin is hidden in the early centuries of church history, but we do know that it originated as a time of preparation. Advent is a word that means coming or arrival. It is a four-week period in which the church remembers the promises of Jesus' first coming and looks forward to his promise to come again. Advent is a season of waiting, expecting, and hoping. Beginning four Sundays prior to Christmas and ending on Christmas Eve, Advent helps us prepare for the coming or Advent of the Christ child at Christmas. So, I guess Advent is more than just getting ready for Christmas Day. It's about preparing our hearts for the Messiah. Like when the prophets of Israelites get ready because God said the Messiah was coming. Looks like there's lots of different things you can do with the Advent season. We've got a December, we've got a December calendar right here, and a coloring book. And look, there's even that city set. Look at all this! Wait, we do a countdown calendar at home. So do we! Ours has a flat wheel in every day. There's a Bible for Sunday night. Ours is like a tree, and each day we open a wooden box, and inside is a tiny ornament. And we do an activity set. And we put Mary and Joseph in one room, and the manger in another room, and then every day we move Mary and Joseph a little closer to the stable. And then on Christmas Day, we put the baby Jesus in the manger. That's not a thing, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. And then we eat a huge breakfast. Of course you do. This one talks about the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath is a circular garland of evergreen branches. The green of the wreath speaks of the hope that we have in God the hope of newness, of renewal, of eternal life. On that wreath, five candles are typically arranged. So I guess the candles aren't for cake. Yeah. <laughs> During the season of Advent, one candle on the wreath is lit each Sunday as a part of the Advent services. Each candle represents an aspect of the spiritual preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The candles with the wreath symbolize the light of God coming into the world through the birth of His Son. The four outer candles represent the period of waiting during the four Sundays of Advent, which themselves symbolize the four centuries of waiting between Prophet Malachi and the birth of Christ. Sarah, finish reading this. It's so cool. The candles of Advent remind us that God is the creator of light. The Bible says that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. In the gentle warmth of the tiny flames, we find comfort and assurance. We gather in your glow, seeking peace, hope, joy, and love. When we, when we light the candles, we prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus, light of the world.
Christmas story? Looks like it. So what's the first candle? On the first Sunday of Advent, the first purple candle is lit. Some churches call the first candle the prophecy candle, in remembrance of the prophets. Primarily Isaiah, who foretold the birth of Christ. This candle represents hope or expectation in anticipation of the coming Messiah. The first candle is also called the candle of hope. I bet some people call it the hope candle because the Israelites were waiting and waiting for the Messiah. And if it had been coming from Jesse's line, then Advent is time of waiting and hoping. Not that maybe we'll have a kind of hope. See, I know it's going to happen, and I can't wait kind of hope. Listen to this! The Israelites waited for the Messiah, and Jesus came! We can have hope because God is faithful and will keep the promises made to us. Our hope comes from God himself. And again, Isaiah says, Through Jesse will spring up one who will rise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will open. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 12, 15, 12, and 13.
So that's the first candle. What's the second? Got it. The second candle is sometimes called the angel's candle. I knew there was an angel one. The angels were created by God to fill his heavenly court with the praise of his name. They devote themselves to serving God in heaven by delighting to do his will. God uses angels as protectors, worshipers, and warriors. Worshippers I knew, but protectors and warriors? Yeah, haven't you heard of guardian angels? Sure I have. I guess I just never really thought about it. We sang a song about it in church. It was, I think it was song 91. Um, anyways, it was, it was, God commands his angels to guard you in your ways. And don't forget how God sent the angel to protect Daniel and the lion's den. Okay, but what does this have to do with Christmas? At Christmas time, the angels were God's messengers. Gabriel, the angel, told Mary that she was carrying the Son of God. And another angel told Joseph not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. You're right, and they were messengers too when they got to share the best news of all. When they told the shepherds that Jesus was born and Messiah has come. It's right here! God also uses them as messengers of his good news of salvation and peace to men and women on earth. Suddenly there was with an angel multitude of heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest on earth peace among those whom he has pleased. possible. 
God promises that a day is coming when the wolf and the lamb will live together, and the lion and the calf will not be enemies. On that glorious day, Jesus will come to lead us at the is the gentle shepherd and the prince of peace.
has two names. What's the other one's name? Looks like this one's other name is the Candle of Joy. Mary rejoiced to learn that she would be that she would be the mother of Jesus. Her heart overflowed in portion from Thanksgiving. In her happiness, Mary sang these words: "My heart praises the Lord. My my soul is glad because of this great thing the mighty God has done for me." With each passing day, the times grow shorter until we see the Lord. Because of this good news, we gather together and share our songs of faith. With exceeding great joy, we lift our voices in celebration. Isaiah, the prophet, delighted in God's promises. When he wrote, the people in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in shadows have seen a new dawn. And Zechariah rejoiced as well when he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Luke 1, 68, 71.
and joy. What's the one that's missing? Love! The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of love. Of all God's blessings, nothing is more precious than love. As we light the love candle, we recall that God loved the world so much that he sent us Jesus, and if we trust in him as our Lord and Savior, we will live forever. This is the heart of God. This is the reason we sing. God sent his only son to earth to save us because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3:16 through 17.
himself to become man, but he humbled himself and came quietly into the world without fanfare, born in a lowly stable, lying in a manger.
Hey, Jose Bass here to let you know that now you can stay connected to South Lake Christian Academy Fine Arts Department on Facebook and YouTube. Simply follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our South Lake Christian Academy Fine Arts Department channel and YouTube. Mm -hmm.